Yeah. Okay, this is the Austin Adobe Users Group for April 2024. Um, this one, I wanted to do this, you know, uh, because um, this is the whole point of this was like importing 3D models into After Effects, so then you can animate and move them in 3D in After Effects, which I had to do for some clients that were in the Air Force, uh, for the Air Force ones, which is great. They wanted a plane and they wanted to mimic what they really do and all that. And, you know, it, it and, and they just kind of get in the newest, the latest version of After Effects, you can do that now. It says you can just import OBJ files. Okay, but, you know, what they say and what really happens isn't really the same thing. So we'll walk through it together. So it's not, it works, but not always. So I'll show you why. And then I, I spent the last two hours trying to find a workaround to apply the materials to the, uh, the model that I imported. And I didn't have any luck always. But if I pull them in from Adobe Stock, they work fine. So that's sort of the the uh, issue with it. I'll walk through all of it right now, I guess. Um, so that was in, can you see my screen? No. Oh, hmm. really? Let's see here. Share screen again. Let's see. Yep. Okay. All right. You can see my screen now. Is that correct? Can my yeah. screen? Yeah. Let's see. What was this? This tab. Hmm. Hold on, I just want to get these zoom controls off of here. Oh. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to go through some. John, I'm on my phone and I'm not seeing your screen. Is anybody else seeing your screen? Yeah, I'm seeing it. Okay, good. Yeah, I can see and it. Ignore me. Okay, we always do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so um, this where well, I'm just seeing After Effects. I'm not really going to go through After Effects too uh, much, but a little bit, just so we can, uh, so we can see what really happens. You know, really After Effects, it's a uh, standard. Your everything's just in two D. X and Y, 1920 by 1080. Sorry. Sorry, I logged in on another machine and it said recording in progress. Oh, I, I need oh. to mute my phone. I'm oh, no worries. Um, so, you know, this is like a 1920 by 1080 flat screen. But After Effects also works in 3D. So if I, you know, if we look at it right now, you know, I have a white panel and, um, uh, you know, if this was smaller, or if we uh, rotated it, um, it really only rotates in 2D, like it spins, right? Mm -hmm. So to make a 3D composite, which everything in After Effects is, works as a composite, you know, like in Photoshop, everything's a document. In um, After Effects, everything's a composite. And I can, right here, I can tell I have these switches to make things 3D. Like right now, I don't even have the option for that in my, um, well, I can make this, now I've made that layer 3D. So now I can rotate it in 3D space. Ooh. I've wow. got a fake little light thing going on there. Cool. So that's cool. And then the other thing you do when you, to make it to work in 3D is you would want to add a camera. So I'm going to, let's see, I'll get rid of this one. I'll leave the blue there. And I'm just going to put a piece of text in here real quick. And this is just kind of cool to go over this. We'll call it front. So front, and um, I'm just going to make this bigger and get it in the center, kind of. Oops. Uh, front, larger text, align, put it in the center. Okay, perfect. And really, now that's all totally fat. You know, I can get another window and I can look at things in kind of a 3D space. So uh, I'm going to do that instead of, uh, uh, let's see, where's the thing? Um, something happened to the, 
Yeah, we should be looking at that. Huh. Okay, so we're going to add a camera to this scene. So I'm going to go new camera. And we'll standard, standard 50 millimeter. That's kind of the default. And we'll say, okay. So now over here, um, I can oh, look at, right now, right now we're looking at, Looking at the active camera, I'm going to go here to custom view because I'm going to be able to see my scene now. And, you know, these layers aren't 3D. So when active in this custom viewer, everything has to be 3D to see it. So I'm turning on 3D for these two layers. So there now you can see that this scene is in 3D. And that's my, this is the uh, camera right here. Right, and I'm moving this the this scene around so you can see what's going on. But what you really notice is that this front text and that background are in exactly the same position or plane. You know, so it doesn't really have any 3D feel to it uh, at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate this this way. I don't know why that's blending out like that. If I go to the text layer and I reveal the scale properties and I make it larger. It just makes it larger right there, right? But if I reveal the position properties, which now are X, Y, and Z, you know, X left and right, um, oh, that's scale, uh, and up and down is Y, right? And Z is forward and backward. Now it's behind the blue. Now it's in front of the blue. So if I twirl this scene around a little bit, you can see now that the front text is floating in front of that uh, background, right? And so it's cool now, that's a real, uh, basically 3D sort of look we have going on. So I'm going back to, I'm gonna go back to the active camera. <clears throat> and we can't really tell, but it's pulled away from that. So another thing you can do, and basically any anytime you're in 3D or in real 3D software, like Maya or Cinema 4D or all that, you have a black environment. When you put something in there, you can't even see it until you have a light in there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna demonstrate that in here as well. Um, so, you know, you really, it is a raw world environment and you start building things and then you have to uh, apply materials to the surfaces of those things. And so that's really how, that's kind of just a quick overview of how um, CG works. But before we get into that more, I'm gonna just, do some more to this scene and we're going to add a light. So I'm going to go new light and I'll say a spotlight to this scene and we'll say, okay. So now you can see this light that I have here uh, is shining kind of, it's so close to that front. It's not even really, it's probably the same space on it. Let's go ahead and look at our custom view and troll that around a little bit. And so you can see the light is so close to the front, it's not really on it. So I'm going to position this light a little bit um, so it falls better on front and put it in front of the light some there. You know, let's get it, uh, let's just do this. Let's move it over here and we'll point it on there. And so now we can kind of see what's going on. So this is cool. And Front. And now what we can do is tell the text, or actually we have to tell the light to light options to cast shadows. Light, where's the cast shadows parameter? Why am I not there? Well, anyway, it should be. And then there should also be accept shadows. Why is it hiding from me now? Okay, well, we'll get there. Let's go down to our background and we'll say material options. It's probably because of the render I have. Cast shadows. I want to accept shadows on. Mm. Oh, it's the renderer. That's probably what it is. Uh, let's go to the classic renderer. And now then cast shadows on. So the shadows are cast by that light. In other words, if we move this light, that shadow is going to move. 
Right, and we can also go into the light here and we can tell the shadow darkness and diffusion to control those parameters and have it look a little more like a real sort of uh, shadow depending on where our light is aiming from. Okay, so that's cool. Um, now, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put another piece of text on there. I'm going to place it in a different place. So I'm just going to duplicate this front and we'll call it back. All right. I'll also highlight the text and I'll make it say back. Whoops. All right. And then I'll also take the position property and I'll move it so it's farther behind the front. I don't really can't really see it exactly. So I'm going to switch from active camera to custom viewer. And now I can sort of see where it's at. And I want it to be like halfway between, I said. So somewhere in there. And the same thing, we want it to maybe cast shadows. So we'll go down here into the material properties. And we'll say cast shadows on it is. And maybe just uh, it's so close when we just don't see it. Stand by, we'll get there. And let's see, let's move it up. We'll move that one up. Yeah, we had shadows there, move this one down. The other thing you can do with the camera, this is so cool, is you can uh, adjust the depth of field. So in the camera options, we have all these things. And if we come here and look again at our scene in the custom viewer, we can kind of see what's going on. I'm gonna zoom in on this just a little bit. Um, let's see. Right, so this is a, you know, we're in the true 3D. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on depth of field, right? And then I'm also gonna increase the aperture quite a bit. And I'll give it some blur level as well, right? And then the step that's focal distance, I want to put it right, this line right here, I put it right around the front. Action, focal distance. And so now we should be, when we go back to active camera, we should see it in here too. Now back is out of focus and front is in focus. And that's basically because of the camera setting of depth of field. So if I move the camera closer to back, that'll come into focus where front would go out of focus. I bet you could animate that too. Yeah, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna set up a camera move and just go between those. So let's do that. I have a position there and I want my focal distance to be mostly on front. That's pretty, that's so much aperture. I don't even have a, <laughs> such a small window. Okay, we'll do something like that and we'll do that. And also we'll set the camera keyframes on that as well. And I'm just gonna come down here to the end of this comp. I'll come down about four seconds, let's say. And we'll change our camera position. And maybe let's zoom into back. All right, and now we're gonna fix our, um, I'm just gonna go here so I can see it. We're gonna fix our focal distance to be on back. I think that should be about right. Uh, a little more. Yeah, whoa, that's tight. Okay, that's a lot of aperture. So there's a camera move. And now also what's cool is that, you know, this background where we're seeing the edges of it, I can go to this solid, even though it's only 1080, I can blow it up in this with the scale property and it won't position it in camera space at all, just make it larger in that space. And if I render this now, I'm just gonna take a second, I have this camera move. And so nothing is moving, only the camera is moving. Yeah. And I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna shorten my comp. So to me, it's a little cumbersome because of all the controls in there, but to me, this is the most awesome thing in After Effects. <laughs> um because of that now and now they they said 
right here, import and add 3D models to your composition. And I can give you this, I can put this link in the chat box too. And so basically this guy's telling us how to import CGI or OBJ models into and use them in 3D in Premiere. But he really goes through and there's another program called Substance. Have you yeah. worked at that at all, Cornelius? No, I haven't, but I've heard of it. Yeah, and it's weird because it's that's not- Adobe, That's an Adobe product, by the way, right? Yeah, but you got to buy it separate. Yeah, you do. It's not part of uh, the creative suite. Yeah. What, I, what is Substance? <clears throat> It's like a 3D, you know, and it works with Illustrator as well. You can, you know, make 3D models. And then you can import In the real them. world or just on the screen? No, just on the screen. Uh -huh, okay. It's, it's yeah, not. I don't know why it's not. I don't understand why it's not part of the thing. Yeah. it's Because they want to make money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, oh, said, John, I, I thought you could do a, uh, can you extrude the text to make it 3D, give it depth? Oh, yeah, we should do that. Yeah. And we'll do that. I, may I ask a question? Is the foreground object always a vector or could it be a, 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 it a photograph? Yeah, no, in, uh, in After Effects, it works both with rastered photographs or vector files. Oh, cool. Um, and in fact, if you built it in Illustrator and you import it into After Effects, you can tell it, hey, this is an Illustrator file and it's vector. Um, but it doesn't convert things to vector if they're already, you know, rasterized. Mm -hmm. So you can still but, but work with a raster photo. But sometimes if it's shapes or a graphic, you can convert it. You can tell it to make new shape layers that match that logo or whatever it is or icon. And it'll make shape layers that match it that are a vector. Hmm. But that's a, well, that's a different uh, lesson. But so let's say I want to import a 3D actually model into this scene as well. So um, I have some things in here I tried. So I'm going to, we'll do this first. Um, I'm just going to go to my uh, libraries here, which are basically my Adobe libraries. And I like this model here of this truck, I, it was free from Adobe stock. Let me just go here and show that again. So um, like here's a bunch of coffee cups from Adobe stock that are all CGI models, right? I pulled that one in because it was free. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get models there. There's also another place. Uh, are you guys familiar with Turbo Squid? Yeah. Uh, Turbo Squid. There's a bazillion models in here and some are free and you can like everybody that does CGI in the world uses uh, that's $19 or whatever. Um, but Turbo Squid has a bazillion, uh, if that's a word, um, CGI yes, models. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, whoops. Um, okay, so. Uh, I'm going to bring this in, which is really just in my library because I got it from Adobe Stock. So, and I'm in the After Effects beta right now. Even in version 24, I cannot drag the models from the library straight into my scene, but in the beta, I can. So that's what I'm doing. 3D models, come on. Okay, fine. Advanced renderer. So it switched the renderer for me. And we'll say make comp size. And we'll say, okay. So here's a basically a 3D truck. Oops, that's my whole scene. Let's go here, truck, where's, where'd my truck go? I think I deleted it accidentally. Okay, make comp size, okay. Okay. So this truck <laughs> is actually in 3D. Let me go here where we're kind of saying. And it's part of my scene now too. So, and it's totally, you know, independent really of that scene although like right now it's halfway through the background because of where it's at in space because you always got to think about where am i building things in space in my 3d space when you're you know doing this kind of work um, let's see custom view active camera we're just going to make this smaller um make this larger and it's bigger too so, you know, 
when you're working with these things, you're constantly zooming in and out all the time. But so there, I just imported a 3D, you know, model, which is really extra cool. Now they did say that you can just import OBJs, and I just wanted to show that I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring some in. I'm just double clicking so I can import, and I have some um, models on my desktop. So for example, I have this uh, I have this Dorito object. It's OBJ, and it has a material file. And here's the two here's the bump map that goes on top, and here's the uh, material file that gets mapped to the 3D model, right? And then this is the 3D model, and this is the material file that tells these two things to be mapped. So I'm just going to say open to import the OBJ file. And so now it also, it brought in the MTL file, and I have the Doritos organic OBJ, and I'm just going to bring this element out and put it in my uh, composition. I'm going to say make comp size. I'm going to say okay. And so this is the problem that I was experiencing. So there's my 3D model and mm -hmm. it's in 3D, it's a real 3D model, but it's not applying the materials to it. So this, the truck automatically did that. Otherwise it would just be a white truck. And I would think it's, this is one of the problems with it. Not every OBJ gets the material applied to it. And there's no, I can't tell it in After Effects to assign it. For me to make this work, I'd have to open it up in another like CGI program, like um, Cinema 4D or something and re-export it and make sure the materials will go with it. There are a couple other um, uh, 3D files, right? And if you look at this thing here, it's the GLB and GLTF, both of these 3D files, the materials are part of that GLB file, so they come in with it. It says it brings in OBJs. Some of them get the materials, some of them don't. So I, that's just a little bug, I think, uh, some sort. And whoops, I'm gonna get rid of the Doritos. So that's kind of the deal with that is that it's, doesn't work perfect mm -hmm. yet. Um, but that's fun. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I don't really, I don't really have a whole lot more. I can build and answer questions and we can try some things and do it all together. You want to do that? Can you uh, show us how to extrude the text? Oh, right. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah, sure. So let's do that. I'm going to, I'm just going to turn off the uh, truck for now and back. So we'll work on that. Um, so let's do, whoops, let's do this. I'm just going to go to the front. Oh, let's go to the end. So with text, if I troll that open, this requires a certain renderer too. Hopefully these two renderers will work together. Material options, and then there's geometry options on text. And this only happens with 3D text. In other words, if it's in 2D, I don't have any of those options. When it's in 3D, and I'm just going to turn the light off so we can see what we're doing. Uh -huh. um, in 3D, you get the geometry options. And that's where it is. You get, there's bevel depth, but there's extrusion depth. So now I can extrude that text. And so then that's what's really- the difference, What's the difference between extrusion and bevel? Bevel goes up and extrusion goes in? Bevel's on an edge. Yeah, so bevel, <laughs> I'll take this back down. Yeah, the bevel is going to be, and you can hardly see it. The bevel is right along the edges here. Like the border. Yeah. Which. Oh, and the exclusion is in the middle, the fill. Oh, but then see, like one of these, one of these renderers, right now we're in advanced. One of them does bevel and one of them does, ex you know what I mean? They don't, if I do that, then I can't blur it. There's some, 
there's some limitations in 3D as to what you can do, which is usually fine because I'm only going to do that. I don't usually have to combine all these things together. But for example, you know, I'm I'm messing with the bevel depth and I'm not seeing anything. Mm. It might be uh, the color too. But so the extrusion, we can choose it right there. And again, that's all just like anything else It's animatable. So what I could do, what we could do is we could start with the, you know, the extrusion is nothing. And animate that. And then here at the end, maybe there's a big extrusion. And we'll go ahead and turn this front back on. Do this. Hmm. That's cool. Also with the lights, the lights can also have like um they can be colored. So you can cast and then you, you know, and you could have, you know, you could have 20 lights on here all doing different things. And maybe there's a blue spotlight right in here and all that. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Um, yeah, I changed that renderer. So my shadows are gone now too, I think. It's only coming on the back one now, not the front. My extrusion? Yeah. Yeah, I only did it on that. Oh, lake. okay. That makes sense. We could do that here too. Yeah, can you copy can you copy the effect from back to front? Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, now, I would think you should be able to, but now I've never copied an extrusion before. We're doing it right now, though. So back and then go to front. <clears throat> Add in here, but geometry, extrusion, and paste. Perfect. Yes, now they'll both do it. By George, he did it. Cool. Yeah. That's one thing I do love about Adobe. Copy and paste works incredibly well throughout. Yeah. You know, I can I can click on uh, this and copy it and go into Premiere Pro and hit paste and it pastes that text the same in there. Hmm. That, now, that's one through. good reason for having a monopoly. <laughs> yeah, and there's a, you know, and there's a, they do work good together. You know, because I have a... yeah. You know, we're the Adobe users group, so maybe I shouldn't say anything bad about Adobe. And I know it's not bad about Adobe. I think it's a great company. But like, um, you know, I get fr a lot of I get frustrated often in Premiere Pro. I mean, I love After Effects. After Effects is my hero program. It's really where my skill is. Um, but sometimes, you know, the Premiere Pro, it's like not that stable and there's lots of bugs and things like that. Um, but the way it's connected to all the other programs, just, you know, I've, I've used other softwares for editing in that. Um, but the, really the way these uh, Adobe programs are integrated, it's just, I mean, it's hard to break away from them. Once you get used to them when you're working with them, like I can't really go anywhere else. All right. I want to now. One thing I'm. That's what the, That's why I call it a monopoly. Yeah. Um, I want to mess with the uh, shadow thing here because. It had to be because I changed the renderer. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. <laughs> The hmm. Sarb, was there a did I script? Was there a question? No, that was me coughing. Sorry. Oops. Yeah. So there are, you know, like in everything else, there are issues where, you know, because I made these extruding, I had to change a renderer, so I lost my shadow. You know, so what I have to do is like pre-render, like, or pre-comp, 
build it with the shadow and then pre-cop the background with that shadow and then come back and put that underneath my extrusion. Yeah. That kind of thing. There's almost always a workaround. Um, I'm just gonna see what this bike now. So I'm just, I just drug in this uh, mountain bike from my library. And these are, you know, since they're 3D models, I can place this anywhere. I'm just gonna turn up the two words for a second. I'm gonna move this background farther away. And let's add another light. So I'm gonna say new light and I'm gonna add an ambient light, not spot, but ambient. And say okay, and so we can just brighten things up. And it's maybe not quite that intense. Okay, that's cool. But now that bike just sitting there, it's gonna do the same camera move because the camera move is what, uh, you know, is moving everything in the uh, scene. Yeah, we can also obviously um, animate the uh, bike as well. So maybe that starts here. Oh, let's also, let's turn it somewhere too, maybe. Yeah. Um, Okay, beautiful, like that. And I'll take these keyframes and put them down here at the end. And we'll come down here. So now I have the camera moving and the bike also moving sort of independent of the camera. I haven't worked with After Effects all that much, but I was so confused about, am I moving the object or am I moving the camera around the object? Took me a while to get that straight. Oh, yeah, it's, um, After Effects, I love it. It's not all that intuitive and it's a little, you know, you, uh, it takes a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um. But it's, it's, I'm telling you, I had a company in Los Angeles and we had a Quantel Henry and an Autodesk Flame, the most expensive, best, highest end compositing tools really there are. That was prior to Nuke. And I'm, I'm, it's maybe not quite as fast, but After Effects is stronger. It's the strongest tool I've ever used my whole career. Um, even though, and as I've said before, you know, in the in in the professional movie world, the real compositing tool is Nuke, which is from the Foundry, which is a English company. Um, but and After Effects has made some inroads into that as well. Uh, Are they similar? Is Nuke a competition for After Effects? Um, uh, it is a uh, similar uh, problem, but Nuke. Um, Nuke works really well for compositing 3D. And it's also node-based, not layer-based, which makes it a little different in terms of workflow. Uh, I like that what layer. Is node? I like the layer-based thing because if you're familiar with Photoshop, then you're familiar with layers and- Yeah. Yeah, me too. And then, you know- like What is, what is the Photoshop of video? Yeah, that's what they, Adder, um, you know, After Effects is sort of, Photoshop with keyframes. Yeah. Um, in fact, even if you, uh, I've demonstrated this before in another thing, but if I import a Photoshop file, I have all the separate layers and I can even tell it, hey, this is a text layer and I can change the text right in After Effects that actually was set originally in uh, Photoshop. Nice. Yeah, the way those play together is uh, is insane. Let's see here now. Would you explain what a node is? Yeah, well, the um, a node. If we were, I'll, um, hold on a second. Um, let's go look at this. Well, the you know, node is like this little. Uh, instead of a layer, you get this little sort of icon, and like what's happening in this layer. So layers are then 
represented with nodes, which are just like little nodes that contain the information or the process that happens. And then you connect the nodes with like arrows, basically. So I need this node to go to this node to go to this node. Oh, which okay. is like the ordering of your layers, kind of. Um, yeah, I was going to open Resolve, but I'll probably stop. But see, Resolve is um, node-based. What about Final Cut? Uh, Final Cut's like layer-based. Final Cut is layer-based. <clears throat> yeah. And Nuke is Nuke is layer-based. I mean, node-based. And Resolve is node-based. What about iMoving? Because a lot of people, amateurs, I guess, use iMoving. Oh, dude, you know, I, you know, hey, man, if I'm just making a slideshow for some far off distant relative, I use iMovie all the time because it's so fast. You know, you just throw everything in there and I can do a little move on each photo or whatever quickly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, also, like I've been looking for I have like two or three different ways to edit on my phone, you know, like cap cut and stuff like that. Um, what What is cap cut? Because I've been hearing about that lately. What is cap cut? Uh, it's a video editor. Oh, is it? And mm -hmm. you can get it free. Right? And it works. And then if you want anything, if you don't want it watermarked or you don't want to see the CapCut logo at the end and you want a couple of more enhanced features, there is a paid version. I learned about it when teaching a class at Lumen Bright. I taught some teacher from Massachusetts and she said all of her kids were on CapCut. I'm like, oh, CapCut. So I checked it out and I was looking at it and then I just noticed that it's everywhere. You know, like half the TikTok videos all end with a CapCut logo. Oh, yeah. Know? Yeah. Okay. What did I want to do? I wanted the... Cinema 4D. Oh, now I've... Now I've done it. I tried to select something and I have the rainbow wheel of death. So here we go. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> something. I can't. Okay. Well, we'll just have to tell industry jokes while we wait, I guess. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I can't even, I have to, I have to be on that renderer to even see the CGI. Okay. Oh, well, I can show um, something else, too. Uh, we could do that. Like, for example, we could put this, we could make the background so it's, um, you know, not just plain, uh, but we can make it like a box. You know, there I can see the edges. So uh, if I use my... Oops. I'm going to switch out of 3D for a second just so I can move the anchor point, which I want to be here. Yes. And then when this is 3D, we could basically make like a cube or we could make it so that the uh, bot, the uh, bike is inside the. Uh... Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to go through that, but you get the idea. Well, I'm just playing around, so I'm not doing anything real. Um, hmm. Does it make you think of anything you, you know, that this would come in handy for? I mean, for me, a lot of times, you know, I'm a compositor, really. So often I'm fixing things. So the way I might use uh, CGI in a composite in After Effects is um, maybe there's a shot of, uh, you know, down a street, you know, but the, the buildings end and they want 
cars parked and the buildings to extend all the way farther down in the scene this this even there yeah so I would have a CGI artist model and create a CGI element of the new buildings or new cars in the parking lot. And then I could bring them into After Effects and match, track the original camera and then place those CGI elements where they need to go and blend them well and compositing and all that. But then they're gonna move the same way the camera did that I tracked. The camera tracking in After Effects works um, great. Um, and that's really, you know, all good work for me requires masking and tracking. I can do, I can build anything with masking and tracking. If I don't have those two skills and I can't really build, you know, I can, you know, maybe animate a logo or something, but, um, those are just good skills to have. Well, let's animate our bike then while we're sitting here. Uh-oh, it's in the water. It's in the water. That's funny. There we go. Oh, it's doing all kinds of crazy things because the camera's moving around. Yeah, let's fix that yeah. too. Camera. Let's go down here. Camera controls. So one thing in the After Effects, I'm just hitting the letter C and it's toggling between all the different camera controls, which I can see going on up here. Cool. And so this one is the kind of position. And this one, as you see, is the tracking. Mm -hmm. And then this one is the sort of the rotation of it. Okay, so that's fun. You know, and that's just us screwing around with a couple of minutes and we're making some, you know, scene that looks like that. So it's, you can, I can't speak highly enough of After Effects. Yeah, I like it too. I should play around with it more. So I built this earlier while I was practicing. This is the, this is that truck. And I just brought in one image of the road and if I spend any, I spent like five minutes on it, but you can see if I spent the proper amount of time on it, I could have the truck driving down the road, you know, and then we could, uh, maybe we'd even build a little shadow under it. Let's do that. Let's see. Uh, oh, I don't have it on there. Um, uh, oh, I can't. Mm, so that's I guess I did read about that too. I cannot add effects to the CGI model to the OBJ model. Not even a shadow. Um, well, I what I'm gonna I, to do anything I would have to add another layer. So that's what I was gonna do. I can I could add another layer to this and then make it black, but I can't add the even make it black effect. So what I could do is, let's see, I'll, I'll make a new layer that is just black. Right, okay, and black, black. All right, and I'll move that down here and I'll duplicate this truck layer and I'll take that here and I'll take those two layers and I'll pre-compose that so they're in their own composite. And uh, I'll go in there and I'll cut out the black from the truck. So I have a layer doing that, which is just black, right? And if I go back to my main comp, so now I have now I have this road image, and I have this comp I made, black truck, and I have the actual truck layer. And so what I can do is then I'm gonna back up here so I can see it. I'm going to take this pre-comp layer and we'll rename it shadow. Always label your layers. Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> oh, I always do. There's a, there's a great, 
there's a there's a guy that teaches After Effects. He has a billion tutorials. He's really good. It's all really motion graphics and shape layers. But he says, he always says, always label your layers. You know, there's a background, there's a shadow, whatever. He says, always label your layers. And then somebody else took him and made like a video of him saying that over and over and over and all these different. Mm -hmm. I just love it because I'm always, when I teach, I'm always, hey, you got to label your layers. You can't just leave them. You can't just leave them as this. You got to put in, what is it? It's the truck. I don't want to look at ABC model or whatever. I want to see what it is. So this is me faking it with this shadow. Well, I don't know. I could uh, I could add an effect. Oops, my uh, my effect thing doesn't work with that now. Well, I have a um, you know, I do most of my uh, heavy lifting work in After Effects all on a PC, and I have these extra plugins and things um, on there that allow me to get the effects super fast and all that stuff. But I don't have them in here, so I'm gonna go find an effect myself. Right, so I'm just making the shadow and drop it down, and maybe it needs to be like masked out, maybe. So I don't want it up there, so I'll make this mask. That's a mask you just pulled out there. Yep, mask subtract. So if I look at only that mask, it's now that's only showing me this part of the shadow. You know, um, this mask I'll blur it a little bit. Whoops. I'll blur it a little bit, the mask, whoops. Something like that. No, I don't want to lock it. Yeah, that's really not a very good thing. Let's go down here and maybe do this, maybe more blur. Okay, so that's just me in two minutes. So I'll bait a fake little contact yeah. shadow there. It's not too nice. good. Um, that's what happens though you know you and that's one of my sayings i always say too you know it takes getting getting you have this project and getting 90 percent done takes 50 percent of the time and then messing with the details and getting it done that last 10 percent takes the other 50 percent of the time yeah but that's the fun part yeah well, we made it a day and then we revised it for a week. <laughs> you're true. That is the fun part. I hate it when there's a blank screen. But when you're noodling the details, um, that's what I like it. So again, that was just a model. And I did the truck and I just did some um, keyframes on its position, scale, and orientation. Just to fake that. Because After Effects is not really a... a you know, 3D or CGI model, but you can work in 3D space and you can import 3D models. You know, it, it, it's quite strong. But. So are you saying that the truck wouldn't automatically get smaller as it drove away? You have to animate the scale? Oh yeah, I animated everything to get it to do that. So, you know, without, I'm just gonna duplicate this and turn this one off and show the keyframes. Yeah, if I get rid of these keyframes that I built, um, you know, it's just, no, the shadow's going. <laughs> the um, truck's just sitting there. So that's what I did. I go, I go, well, I need a keyframe here. And then I come down here a little ways and then hit this point, it's gonna be rotated maybe a little and it'll be over here now, you know, mm -hmm. and then down here at the end, it's gotta be, um, you know, facing like that and down here, of course, now we got to adjust the scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and then we're going to go to that point and get it on the road more. So basically, you could spend, I mean, you might have to spend all day in here mm -hmm. trying to get it to uh, look right. In terms of the animation, because right now these are going to be these are hard keyframes, so it's going to not be smooth, you know. Yeah, looks pretty good though. I mean, for the minute you spent on it. Yeah, and I spent two minutes on this one before we had our little meeting, so it's a little better. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm still stupid. Okay. That was fun. Mm. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah, he's driving. We well, should put that in the back of the truck, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Can you electrify the bike and have it beat the truck? Let's do it this way. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's a good idea. Oh well, that's it. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Put it in there. Look at that. It looks like it's. <clears> like... <clears throat> yeah. Put it in the back of the truck. And then if I parent it to the movement of the truck, now it'll do the same move. That's right. I was wondering, is there uh, some way you attach it to the truck, but that's what you do, you make yeah. it apparent. Yeah, that's one of the best thing about After Effects, the parenting. Yeah. Parenting. <laughs> yeah, so one thing, and I always talk about this too, I think the nomenclature, and now it doesn't matter, it's just my own thing, it's inaccurate. Because it's <clears throat> always label your layers. It's the um, I'm gonna parent this layer to the truck. Okay, if not yeah. really, because I'm childing it. Then, if I wanted to copy, right? It <laughs> seems like it. Yeah, I would child it, not parent it. But because the truck would be the parent, then. Well, uh, I, I guess you could just use the term pair. I think that's that neutral. You know, just say pair to. Yeah, pair. Would be better. Air, I think that's the easier term for most people to appreciate. Yeah. Huh. Well, so there's our fun little thing for 10 minutes. Okay. That was good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, uh, you know, After Effects is awesome, but you, you know, you, you, gotta spend, uh, you gotta spend time with it though. I mean, like anything, but it's a complex program. Yeah, exactly. Uh, where's my thing? Oh, wait, control shift H. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I, I, like I said, I love it. After Effects is my. Thank you, John, for this great oh. presentation. Very interesting. And uh, may I raise the topic of what are we going to do in May? <laughs> I'm going to Cozumel. <laughs> You're oh. going where? Oh, Cozumel. Cozumel. I love Cozumel. Cozumel and Grand Cayman are my two favorites. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. I have a friend who I think is a, still has a dive boat there, if you're looking for that kind of thing. Well, we got a dive shop that we like. Oh, cool. It's at our hotel where we stay, so it's convenient. That's, okay. That's very yeah, convenient. Very great. Who's your friend? I'm going to stop the recording on this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you already had. No, sorry.